All right, guys, we are back with another episode in our celebration of Batman for his 85th anniversary here on Batman Day. Of course, Batman Day lands this year on September 21st, 2024. It does rotate. This is actually the 11th Batman Day and the real anniversary of the original release of Batman Comics Detective 27 occurred on March 30th, 1939. So it doesn't exactly fall on his true anniversary, but this is the day we celebrate all that is Batman. And I hope you've joined us for all the episodes leading up to this one. If you haven't, be sure to check the playlist link down below or back on the channel homepage because we have been covering each figure released by McFarlane Toys in the DC Multiverse line that is dedicated to a live action version of Batman from the movies. And now we find ourselves quickly coming closer to the end. We are looking at Robert Pattinson as the Batman. This is our first emotional portrayal of the Batman. It has a lot more gritty feel even than all the other ones that tried to have a gritty feel. This one takes it to the next level. And so we are going to jump into that right now and do what we do on the channel. We are going to open this toy and take a closer look. Alrighty, we just took a look at that Justice League Batman figure. And now we're moving in to Robert Pattinson's the Batman. Of course, right now airing on Max is the spinoff of this movie, The Penguin. This is again moving into this, this film itself. Moves into that darker era. The grittiness of Gotham. The more depressing. And of course, the casting of Robert Pattinson as Batman. Many, many people considered it the emo Batman. Of course, released in 2022, this Batman features a costume more reminiscent of a motorcycle gear. You know, a hockey outfit <laughs> placed together. A more homemade kind of Batman costume, which is counter to this idea of this billionaire playboy who can have all this great tech developed. Of course, we see in the film, as we take a look at the package, the, um, the bat toys, the Batmobile, the, the bat cycle are just common items. It's a common motorcycle with maybe some additional things added to it. It's a common muscle car. Nothing truly outrageous or special like you've seen in all the other Batman films and in most of the animated series, most of the comics. Here you're getting this emo, emotional, depressed Batman still after more than a decade, probably two decades, not able to get over the loss of his parents. Of course, that's really the motivation for all Batman, right? But uh, once again, we see DC throwing in more characters than we know what to do with. We have Batwoman, or sorry, Batman. We have Catwoman. We have uh, the Penguin. And it is just too much going on in my mind. The whole aesthetic looks good it's an okay film not the greatest um of course we have the riddler in it as part of a serial killer so this is where they really lean in to the idea of batman being a and i'm going to open this while we chat here about Batman being a detective, right? Of course, coming at us from, originally from Detective Comics 27. Uh, it, you know, he's always been a kind of a detective, uh, but, and they've played into it a lot in the video games. They've, 
uh, you know, talked a lot about in the comics, but really in this movie, they try to go full bore into that so-called detective persona, really laying in to the Riddler and the serial killer aspect, uh, and Batman needing to hunt that serial killer. Of course, here's the packaging. Uh, you know, it looks like we only have one accessory. We have our grappling gun here, and it of course is vacuum formed in here. So let's take a second and get these out. All right, here we are. Robert Pattinson as the Batman. Once again, we find ourselves with a rubber cape. So forget about any fun little action poses. We're left with the dangly cape. We have this one accessory. This is an interesting one. It has a peg hole. You'll see one of the most disappointing things is this hand. So he doesn't come with alternate hands. He has two hands. One is your typical grip hand over here. Let's like, I guess, to hold a motorcycle or some other item that doesn't come with this. <laughs> but this you've got like this karate chop hand and the gun, the grappling gun actually snaps in there like so, and so he can, you know, hold it like this, which is weird to, to say the least. Uh, it's an abnormal way to hold an accessory on a toy, but I know what they're going here for, right? You can see in the card that comes with it, how he's holding the gun. It seems to be just kind of like touching his hand on there. Uh, maybe he's got a thumb on it and you can't really see because of the darkness, but they're trying to mimic that picture with this, which is, in my opinion, just odd. Looks kind of weird. Uh, I, I get it. More importantly, uh, this sculpt on this is also odd. As you take a look at the legs, like he looks super, super top heavy. It feels like he's got this big bulky top uh, with all this, you know, gear on. And you come down, he's got these little skinny legs, like these little chicken legs. And they they don't look right. <laughs> I mean, it looks like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Looks like he had polio or something. His legs don't seem to move, move in a natural way. Um, and, you know... Apologies, Robert Pattinson, if your legs actually look like that, but the sculpt on here just looks, it looks weird. I mean, it's one of these things where that's probably what his normal legs very closely look like, and there's no added padding. There's none of that fake musculature of the other Batman costume. So it makes him look skinny. It makes his legs look abnormal compared to all the iconic suits we've seen in the past, which accentuate, accentuate musculature. You see he's got these knee pads on there like the original character. He's got the uh, shoulder pads either from those BMX outfits, not BMX, but you know motocross or catchers outfits, however you want to look at it. It's got some nice detailing. Of course, the Bat logo is on here. Of course, this is the least bat looking logo yet with just a couple of wings, no, no head or tail on there. We've got some sculpted in uh, darts or arrows, which is kind of nice. We have these, um, the fins on the gauntlets, but they're kind of like a rubber material. So they're, you can see one got curled up in the package here. They're, but they're very flimsy, unlike all the other figures where they're hard. We have this black utility belt, again, moving away from the traditional yellow and gold. You know, Val Kilmer, we had the silver. Uh, you know, this is more akin to what I would say of the George Clooney with the black, uh, where they have tried to stick with that gold and yellow on all the other costumes. Um, you know, the head sculpt, you know, let's see if we can get a better, better look at that head sculpt. Head sculpt's pretty good. Again, we find, and let's get, see if we can get that down a little bit. We find it looking, you know, looks like 
Robert Pattinson's jawline and mouth. So nice to see that they were able to hit that well. Uh, let's take a look at the joints, right? So once again, we have those butterflies, but there's not, eh, there's decent movement there, right? I can get his chicken wings out. So pretty good. So that's not bad. Um, once again, we find these additional shoulder pads restricting the, the, the turn on that bicep rotation. Of course, we have the double hinged shoulder pads, typical hands. Uh, once again, the ratchet, ratcheting uh, hip socket. So same, same exact points of articulations we've gone through all of these figures with today. And so, you know, not much else I can say about this figure. Uh, again, the movie's okay. And I know a lot of people really like this kind of depressing emo Batman. And it just wasn't for me uh, personally. I, you know, like more, like I said, the Nolan Batman. And of course, Keaton is the ultimate but this was okay. You know, I watched it once. Don't really care if I ever see it again. Um, you know, who knows if the sequel will see the light of day with the reboot of the DC universe. Um, we can only hope we get a really good Batman coming out of that whole uh, reboot. But we will see. Not sure what else. You know, I have to digest this figure a bit. I would normally say, let's pose this thing up. Um, but I, as I scan through a lot of the images, I didn't see anything really super iconic. Most of them all are just emo Batman, right? <laughs> like he's just brooding. Um, you know, there's a few of him like kind of looking like this off to the side. Oh, that's interesting. So again, we have we, we see this character where we've lost some of the head articulation and just very little movement, maybe 30 degrees rotation in there. So that's also going to restrict us from being able to pose him doing much any, of anything. Uh, top, very shallow, uh, no forward articulation. So not a lot of head movement at all on this figure. So I think, what, 2026, the sequel to this movie comes out. Um, I don't know if they plan to maintain him as the Batman in this new DCU. I hope not. I hope what, uh, you know, they're doing with this more comic book accurate Superman plays out through the rest of the, the line and we get away from this emo dreariness. I mean, Batman's not supposed to be all suns and rainbows, but he's also not so god-awful depressing as they've made him in modern times. And so, you know, whether it's the show Gotham that was on Fox was always de super depressing and poor. And, you know, it's New York. It's supposed to be New York City. It's, it's got good times as well as the criminal areas. It doesn't have to all be, like, just dreary. He can still be you know, depressed or, you know, suffering from, you know, wanting to justice because he never got justice for his parents. You can do that stuff without making it so, so depressing, <laughs> I guess is my point. So that was some of my final thoughts, I guess, as I wanted to ramble. But let's uh, stop here, go back over, uh, cross the room and uh, get my final, final thoughts together for you. And then we'll send you on your way until the next one. All right, guys, that was Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson, if I can say his name as the Batman. What did you think of this one? I got to say, this one, uh, the face sculpt looks good. That really, the torso up looks good. Again, some issues with the cape. But man, there's something off with the chicken legs on this figure. But otherwise, he's a must-have for this collection of movie Batman. He's not my favorite portrayal of Batman, uh, but it is still one we have to cover here. 
And so I appreciate you joining us. I'd love to know what you think about this one, because I know my opinion of this film and of this Batman is somewhat controversial. A lot of people really like this one. I think he's one you either love or hate as his portrayal of the Batman. Of course, we have a sequel coming up, I think, next year in 20 or two years, 2026. So it should be interesting to see how that goes. And I'd love to know what you think about this figure, what you think about this movie. So leave me a comment down below. And you've made it to the end, so smash the like button. And make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell for notification because we have at least one more of these to go. We had planned for the next one to be Ben Affleck from The Flash, but unfortunately that figure did not arrive in time for production and won't arrive until after Batman Day. So we weren't able to do that one, but we do have the return of Michael Keaton as Batman 89. So let's stop talking about it. We're gonna go into that one in the next video. So until then, have fun, and we'll see you back here in about 50 minutes for our final live action Batman.